Welcome back friends. Let us jump in and work on lighting. So now I have the scene back here. Um, so maybe the first thing I want to do is I want to just give it um, some kind of plane both on the ground and the background. So I'm just going to pick up my plane model, drop it in there, hit V, hover over this green box, it's not selecting, push shift, click and drag upwards to increase the size, just going to make that as big as possible, okay, let me zoom out, okay. click V again, Z axis, Expand it out to about 50. No, that's too much. Let's do 30. Okay. Give it X. Okay, and I'm gonna duplicate duplicate the, the plane, copy paste. And I'm just gonna shift, select both of them, put them in a folder, and just name it ground. Okay. Select the second one. I'm just gonna rotate it like 90 degrees. Perfect. Push it back. Okay, can probably go wider. And let me just undo this stuff. Down a little, make that bigger. And the reason why I'm making this big is because after I, I set up my camera view, uh, I say for example, I want it to be somewhat in the middle. You see, there's still this back, this uh, space in the back here. So I need to expand this plane wider for it to kind of cover up all of that. So and there we go. Okay. Awesome. But I've already set up a uh, picked up a camera angle that I wanted so I just named that main view so basically what you do is after you finish rotating around and moving around and finding the angle that you want you just come up to camera bookmark and just click the plus sign and it would save it for you so I have mine already saved up here and this is the one I want okay so for lighting I'm gonna turn off the ones that I already did to kind of show you my process and so you click on environment, you move over to lighting. And so Adobe Dimension has a lot of already preset lightings here, which you feel comfortable to test them out and see which one works best for your scene. Uh, but for mine, I'm just going to do a custom one. So I'm just going to select circle light. 
and you so so you can see default by default it is just uh harsh it is bright intensity is really 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 strong um so i'm just going to work on those ones so for my fill so this i'm going to give it fill light sorry i mean key light And so my key light, um, the goal for this key light is to have it be focused on the deer and the fiery globe in the middle here. And so the direction is going to have to be adjusted to move it to face that direction. And so the intensity, you know, how bright you want it to be and the rotation of the specific angle that you want it to point. So a good, a good practice that I usually do is I zoom out so I have a main view a top view selected already I'm saved and so with the rotation you just look for the direction of the shadows okay and that would give you a good idea of where the direction of the light source is so just something to keep in mind so go back to my main view um, I think I would have this at one one four percent I'd have my rotation at maybe negative 24 and I'll give a height of like 28 and so the height is also you know how far or how close the light source is um, and the size is how wide how much how much area does the light cover um, so the more the higher you go the wider the light source is the lower you go the more focused it is. Um, so I'll put mine at 8%. And the, the edge softness is basically the edges of the shadows. How well do they blend from dark to light? So I would put mine, just leave it at zero. That's fine. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, then the second one I'm going to add is a key light. Sorry, a fill light. I keep mixing this stuff up. Is a fill light. So basically my fill light, the goal is for it to just kind of fill in a little bit of the dark areas, like here. Um, not too intense. Just something to just kind of just um, even out between the darkness and the light parts. Um, so for fill, I'll just put it at 97%. And the rotation, negative one, zero, eight percent, the degrees. And the height, put it at six. And the size, let's say 13. And the edge, maybe 28 degrees, 28 percent, 28 percent. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm looking good. Um, I might just turn down the, let me have a look at the environment. So that what the environment does is, um, it is a settings for, for both of them. Okay, so whatever you change here, it affects both of them together at the same time. Um, so it's like the overall, both the key and the fill light. Um, so mine is at 30, 35%, but you can also go in individually and change that one. So I'll just bring down the key light just a little bit. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. So for the key light, I want to give it, I want to change the color. Now it's, it's just on white. So I want to give it just a, a little warmth, maybe like a somewhat of a sunny-ish yellow. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. And the fill, let's give it something cool. Let's give it some nice cool blue. And we can turn that down. Yeah, awesome, that looks good.
Yes. Perfect. Okay. So let's jump into Photoshop. And after rendering, and it's not going to be the same as the original one, but um, this is the original one. And so just with little rendering, um, this is what it came out as. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So how to render is you go up to render, and then you select your main camera view, the one that you want it to render out. Give it a file name. Um, choose high, high, slow. That's for the final. It gives you the really crisp, nice rendering. But if you're just like you want a quick render to just give you an idea of what your work looks like, you can choose the low and fast. Um, and then I like to choose a PSD because I'm just going to edit and save. You can save it as a PS, PNG or a JPEG. And then choose your file location. Just click render and there you should have it. So back into Photoshop. After my folder comes in, it would render as this. So I just group them all in a folder. I just duplicate it and I merge. Okay. So when it's merged, I just go into filter, camera raw filter. And so at this stage, it is completely also, again, subjective, whatever you want. Um, I like my scenes to have somewhat of some contrast, you know, shadows, um, you know, to be a little bit defined. So you can play around with them, but not too much. Um, just a little bit. Um, adding some contrast. Okay, adding some clarity, just a little bit. And then curve. I like to have just a slight S curve, a slight, but also depends on the kind of work you're doing. Um, yeah. And I think that should be good. Perfect. And then you're done. And then just post it wherever you want it to be. Um, but yes, so with orientation, this is uh, 1920 by 1080 um, for the size. You can always change it again by having um, your select tool selected, clicking on the, the top, right, uh, top left corner here where it has the measurements. And then you can always change your canvas measurements or sizing here. You can put it Instagram sizing. Um, but again, once you once you change the sizing, you would have to change your camera view again to kind of have a more interesting um, view, viewpoint. viewpoint. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, checking out this video. And uh, just uh, leave a like, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you are, I thank you so much.